All right, good afternoon, everybody. Give a couple of minutes for people to join. Um, this is one of those lives that I wasn't sure if I was gonna go live or not, but this will be episode six. So if you have been keeping up with the series, um, I always post in tumblers for newbies um, because I am a newbie and I love as a newbie when you can learn from new people too, y'all. It's pretty awesome. Um, I promise you, promise you that I am going to do something to this fuzziness on this head. We're going to get there, but, um, and this angle is killing the sister, but tonight we're going to play with a couple of things. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of wood grains that I've been working on. I am almost done with the order for my department that I've been talking about and kind of doing a series on as well. Um, and then I have actually two tumblers, a 30 ounce um, modern curve or 30 ounce curve um, and a 30 ounce skinny that we're going to do a little marbling on tonight. So I've been kind of playing with alcohol inks. Um, the marbling thing, the technique is kind of tricky. It's not bad though. It's not bad. So I want to intimidate you with that. But once you get it, you got it. I will tell you that. Do not shy away from alcohol inks. Um, this is a good example. This is one of the wood grains that I've been working on. It's actually the last one in the series for my department because we're a pretty small little um, science group. So this is the last one that I'll be taking decals off of. And this baby should get its first layer of epoxy either tonight if my stamina holds up or tomorrow. So I will definitely pull a couple of these to kind of give you an idea. I can go over the steps really quickly once we go through it, and then I'll show it to you on a couple of cups that we have available as well. So that's one. Um, these I got from Rural King, Rural, Rural King um, which is a feed store. They are online, they do ship. When these are on clearance, this normally starts out green. Any color that is not in season goes on clearance for $2.73 by the time you ship it to yourself. I think the store I ordered from is like in Kentucky or West Virginia. I'm in Texas. So it adds about 25 cents or so per cup. So you're still getting these for under $3 each. And these have been awesome. Um, there's a silver lip and also a ridge at the bottom. But as you can see, you can easily cover those ridges. And then once you have epoxy on it, you'll hardly be able to see it. So no one will know it was there but you. Um, remember, the lids do come with a green little slider, which you can change. But honestly, most of my customers don't care about the lid. They just want to know that it seals, it's not leaking, and they are fine. And these will actually be the first set of tumblers for me. Um, I'm prepping to do tumblers that are going to actually go in my retail store. So I have a vendor booth. And my goal is to do 10 tumblers to kind of start off a little spring series where they can all be on display. I promised myself that I would make 10 tumblers before I ever sold my first tumbler. And it's really just learning from each one. And I probably can go from cup to cup to cup and just kind of show you some of the mistakes that I've made along the way. But let me grab this door. It's gonna be a little moving here. And I'm gonna try not to make this too, too long. So. First things first, I'll show you the decal removal. A lot of people have asked on the wood grain, are the cups sanded? I sand my cup, I prep it, I, I will spray paint it a matte white. It's normally what I use. You can alcohol ink or wood grain. Um, you can do it on top of a black cup, blue cup, any cup of your choice. Every cup color is gonna change the character of what you can see. So it's pretty much what it is. And this is almost like a modified peekaboo method. So if I have a cup and I'm not quite sure, or if it's for a guy and I'm like, eh, I will go in between. And this is normally my go-to method for that cup. Of course, when you go live, guys, and you think you have all your materials close to you, you don't. And right now, here we go. I need my little... Weeding tool. So this is your best friend, your weeding tools. If you order a couple of kits, epoxy, they're gonna come with these. Do not throw away the random ones that you will get because when I ordered my Cricut, they actually sent me a starter set that had a weeding tool in it. And then the more I ordered epoxy from just other companies, just kind of trying different stuff, 
They were singing weeding tools as well. And for the longest, I never used these. But then I figured out, number one, you're weeding in different rooms, but sometimes the other ones are better. So I love my Cricut tools and you will hear me talk about Cricut. The stencil that was made for this cup in particular, I use my Cricut Maker. Um, so it's all about what you have available to you. You can use, um, they do have removable stickers, which I've seen people use as far as peekaboo techniques and they work as well. So we'll go ahead and take a couple of these decals off. So I'm gonna bring you down to my little area so you can see. Um, I will tell you this, can you use permanent vinyl um, for these cups? The answer is yes. You want to make sure if you're looking on the very edge, you can kind of see where this little gear cog wheel is located. I don't want to take my, my weeding tool and go out because I run the risk of scratching here. Whenever I weed without wearing gloves, I scratch my cups. There is a way to fix the scratches, most of them. And there's also a really good way to kind of cover them. I add a little alcohol to my brush and just wipe in the same direction. And remember that alcohol is going to activate alcohol. So it will allow you to um, take away some of those scratches you've made if you have nails. The other thing is when you are doing a wood grain or using, especially your wood grains, because you're working on top of a painted layer underneath, your painted layer must be 100% dry. If you touch it and you can see a fingerprint, you're not ready. Because what's gonna happen, which some of you guys saw at the end of episode five for me, I got really excited, extra motivated, spray painted the cup, slapped on the decals, alcohol inked it all in one day. Y'all, I was having a moment. And what ended up happening is when I removed the decal, oh, it came off. The paint as well, all the way down to the raw cup. So that cup itself is actually gonna be probably the subject of a what to do with this cup now video. But if you take a quick look, making sure you're kind of able to get a view, I'm gonna move into the design so that if I happen to scrape or scratch across, I'm gonna be scraping against that vinyl. I use removable vinyl. If you are an Oracle person, it's gonna be your 631 vinyl. Be really careful when you're getting under there that you are not scratching your epoxy. If you scratch it too deeply, those scratches can show. I've only had that happen, I believe, once. If you use shimmer vinyl, a lot of you guys have heard me talk about the shimmer vinyl, the paper studio that you find at, um, is it Hobby Lobby? I think it's Hobby Lobby. Um, Y'all, shimmer vinyl is kind of like glitter vinyl for everyone that is in the heat trans the heat transfer vinyl world, making t-shirts and items. Shimmer vinyl is possessed. It is the devil. It does not like to come off of my little cups. So I actually made myself go back and reprint this design using removable vinyl. And I've just gotten really low on my vinyl amount. So I've got to be um, really particular about my scraps until I make myself go back. If you do remove a vinyl, you're gonna notice that when you pull it away, it should come away pretty cleanly. Now, sometimes if you take a close enough look, you may get a couple of areas where you're gonna have some residue left behind. Um, I've seen a couple of ways to get rid of it. Um, for this removable vinyl, this is, I believe this is Paper Studio vinyl as well. Most of my vinyl, once I really decided I was gonna use it on a regular basis and I like my Cricut, I started ordering from Amazon um, in larger rolls. So instead of getting like a three foot roll, I now get a 25 foot roll. And I try to do it, especially in my basic colors. And if you see here, you'll notice some of that residue that I was kind of telling you about there. So as we go, I want to first make sure that none of, it's not. What that's coming from there is underneath my decal, I had a seepage of paint. So what I can do and what I will do is take a little Q-tip, dip it in some acetone, and I will actually go around that area and remove all of that little residue part. So the good thing about your, um, what grain is, what grain is extremely forgiving. If you have a bumpy cup and you just cannot figure out what to do with the bumpy cup, um, yeah, yeah, I'll peekaboo it, we'll, we'll, we'll grain it and let it work. Those knots will start to look like wood. And I wanted to peel just enough of this to kind of show you the color 
that's going to be under here is going to be gorgeous. Um, this chunky holographic glitter is from Maker's Flow, which I normally put that on my description, so I'll try to remember to go back and edit. But this is Nebula. Um, it's one of their colors for this season. And I was actually lucky enough to get the... Um, the pack that comes with all 24 of their colors that they had available. So, and I noticed that it has been out of stock for quite a while, but Maker's Flow glitter, chunky glitter, if that is your thing, they do offer fine glitter, but I was just really on their holographic chunky glitter. It is amazing. Um, if you haven't had a chance to use cupcake or dragon fruit, Mardi Gras is a really, really pretty color. I'm gonna be doing some coloring book tumblers, a little Elsa, some Doc McStuffins. Um, and I will be using those glitters as the base of the cup. And so pretty excited about that. So I will keep you guys tuned and let you know exactly when that tutorial will pop up as well. If for any reason, if you think of a technique you haven't seen and y'all just want to see me try it, I will go for it. Um, tonight's video is going to center around doing a full marble. I have done a marble um, if you've had a chance to see the damask um, tumbler that has the three little sections, so the bottom part is marble, the middle section has chunky glitter, and the top section is a peekaboo using fine glitter. I made a double one, not a triple one for my mom, and that marble, y'all, the first time gave me the blues. Like, I just could not figure it out. And what I figured after watching a few more videos was I really needed to add a flood coat. So you're going to hear a couple of terms. I know this is Tumblr for newbies and I try to make sure I define everything I use, kind of like my thing. But um, let's say, for example, we're working on a 30 ounce skinny, which we will tonight. I know some people that when they do layers for that 30 ounce, they're only going to use maybe 10 to 15 milliliters of epoxy. And that 15 is probably pushing it for them. So they're going to just do really, really thin coats. When you hear someone say flood coat, when they say flood coat, they it, it's literally what the word means. Um, on a 30 milliliter tumbler, I may use somewhere between 30, almost 40 ml of epoxy. So I want my finger to glide and move the epoxy, but not actually touch the surface. If you're getting into chunky glitter, your first two layers after you have laid your glitter should be flood coats. Um, if you start doing flood coats on the glitter um, for those first two layers, you will learn where your cutoff is. Whether 20 milliliters is enough, if you need 30. And once you find your personal sweet spot, it'll probably stay about the same no matter what glitter or chunky glitter you're working with. Fine glitter is a little bit different. Remember, if you add too much glitter, um, especially for that first um, coat right before you shake your glitter on, fine glitter is going to absorb that epoxy and it's going to look dark and chunky and heavy. But the amazing thing is it only occurs in certain spots and those spots will drive you insane. Um, most people will think that's just the design, that's how it looks, but those of us who are glitter lovers, we're going to look like, oh, it happened to you. Yeah. So we all have that first cup that started out great. And then for some reason, the little epoxy just took your glitter over. If you're noticing that your glitter looks like mud, if it has like, especially in the blacks, the dark blues, the grays, you may have to change to a glitter that has a little bit more silver in it. So that silver is going to help. And this kind of shows you just the color. And what I'll do once I epoxy this, I will show you the difference in the amount of pop. Now you can see in between. You guys see what those white areas are in the name? Because those are my spirits. Again, it's where some of my paint came through. You can go in with a small touch-up brush, which I may do. But honestly, I think I'm going to spray paint. Um, sorry, spray the edge of a paintbrush with a little alcohol and just sweep over it. And then epoxy, and we'll see what that turns out and looks like. But I'm going to pause on this cup because I also finally did. And this is going to be another peekaboo of mine. If you can see the little image, some of you guys know right away what it's going to be. This is going to be my Queen Bee Tumbler. So I have the little vinyl drips that are going to be at the top. 
And the honeycombs, which I learned, are supposed to always point up and down because that's how they occur in nature, according to the beekeeper. And it's going to have the outline of the term queen, which I'm going to double um, stick vinyl. I started to do a two-layer peekaboo, but I haven't built up the confidence for that. And then on the very bottom, it's going to have a honeycomb as well. So I will peel this one. And when I'm ready to epoxy or probably my final product, I will do a video for you guys on this one as well. So, so far, I only have four turners, which means I can roughly run about eight cups at a time. So as long as I have four that are spinning, which I try to keep all of my turners turning, and four that are in the drying stage, and when I get really busy or really ahead of myself, I will then turn. And last night, guys, this I started the epoxy method. I'm making myself a modified little pencil. So I'm gonna add in royal blue, um, because that's my sorority color as far as the pencil itself and then add the little gray for the eraser section and This is that holographic chunky glitter, but the shine the shine is amazing so um, I try to just do a couple of techniques that will actually be my first Mod Podge cup. I'm not a huge Mod Podger um, I just did not love the product when I first started so you know all right, so push it back just a little bit, get a little something in. And tonight, the star of the show, I have a little wax paper down because we're not glittering tonight, which is one of those. But I promised myself I would at least have three cups um, out of the first 10 that are going to go in the store that did not have any glitter. So I'm trying to hit and just kind of see as far as... My clientele goes, um, what they like, what sells the quickest, and then I'll know exactly what to make there. This is a 30 ounce skinny. Remember that skinnies are gonna be tapered. If you want a 30 ounce straight, they do. There are companies that will sell you a 30 ounce straight tumbler, but you have to be really, really specific in what you want, all right? You have to excuse me, we got a lot going on. Someone should have definitely reminded me that this should be put on a black shirt. So I will make a black shirt because me and the color white do not get along. Now, as always, going to make sure we repeat. My ventilation is going. I am indoors. I'm in Texas, y'all. We have gone from zero degrees six days ago. Today it was 70 degrees. My window is up. Ceiling fan is going. My door is open. My vent is also running below. And nitrile gloves. And of course, I have the infamous respirator as well. So make sure you are PPE'd up as much as possible. You may notice in videos that people do not necessarily wear the respirators, but most of them have other ventilation that's going, but at all times, if it's at all possible, make sure you wear that as well. I wanna protect my surface, but I've convinced myself this table is just gonna be, both of these tables are gonna be loved on, and then we're going to epoxy them. All right, so first things first, before we get to our illustrious cups, we're going to do what we always do. And y'all, I think I made another mistake. You know how I see these silicone cups that come with different kits? Y'all, these are awesome. You know what the downfall is about these cups beyond the very satisfying way of peeling off all the epoxy? Most of us don't clean our cups and I'm guilty. Um. I can also admit to you that I'm very bad at cleaning my paint brushes. And I used to be really good at this. If I'm painting, I'm actually very particular about it. But for some reason, that is just not happening right now. So I'm going to, since my cup is doing what it do, I'm gonna be honest, I'm tempted to flip this thing inside out and use the opposite side. What do you guys think? Is that possible? Has anybody done that before? If you have, I would love to know. Um, what I'm gonna do is take down, um, I start doing episodes roughly once a week. 
is kind of my goal. Right now, I'm just hopping on live as I get to different techniques to kind of vlog my little self and know where I was. So I'm going to turn this inside out. Oh, yeah, that's going to work for us today. I'm sorry. That's just really going to have to work. So um, we'll see how this goes. And if it doesn't go right, then I'll make a video that says, hey, don't do that. Um, Art and Glow Epoxy, we're going to do, we're going to just go ahead and pump out probably a full 60 milliliters because I'm doing two of these cups tonight. And if I have anything left, I have another cup that I can also put a second coat on. You are going to need some white. Y'all, white is huge. You're going to need some white acrylic paint. It doesn't matter what kind. That's just the cheapest kind, Craft Smarts. And I believe I just picked up from a store randomly. We're going to be using our nice little medicine cups because you're going to place a little bit of your epoxy here. You're going to need a second epoxy setup for your um, white, which marbling without white is possible. But honestly, it's the white that makes it like really do its thing. So the good thing about this, if you... Um, are doing the snow cone pumps you don't have to sit and look at measurements um this is going to pump out about 56 milliliters it's what i found it does my resin is still going to be a little harder to pump and i always go back and do a baby squirt of hardener because so i like a little bit more hardener than resin not too much to throw out my ratio because of course I still want um, my epoxy to cure and harden correctly. Every now and then I still will get um, a tacky cup. So it's gonna happen. You're gonna either mix incorrectly, the temperature in your room isn't exactly what you want. What I've figured out most of the time is if I wait, I will sometimes give it an additional 12 to 24 hours. It will normally go ahead and harden and set for me. Um, I had one cup that was a little tackier than I would have liked it to have been after about 16 hours. And so I actually let it sit another 24 hours. And once I felt like it was nice, hardened, cured, I let it sit another 24 hours. You do not want to epoxy over an uncured label layer of epoxy. What's going to happen is the layer that did not cure is going to start eating through your other layer. So if you put a layer on top, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it's going to see through. It's going to make you mad. And especially if you put it under a decal or if it's just so happens to fall under a light colored glitter, it is going to show. So you're going to get that infamous customer phone call. And as a small business owner, y'all, when you get that first customer that gives you a call and is like, look, this is not right. I love and appreciate the feedback, but it's, well, what do you mean? Like, it's one of those because you're really thinking, you know, the average person tries to send out a really quality product. I don't just take that part for granted at all. I am scraping my sides. Uh, so this is silicone. There's a dip at the bottom of the cup. So it's not difficult at all to be able to really get in here and stir things. So that part is pretty awesome. I am not a gentle stirrer. I mean, I probably should be, but I'm not. So the gentle stirring is going to be um, something that I pay attention to. Do you have bubbles? The answer is yes. Um, those bubbles normally don't make a difference, to be pretty honest with you. I kind of expect them, but I'm going to lift it up, take a look, and this epoxy is nice and clear. Keep in mind... Once again, if you notice here, you guys see the yellowing? This one is a lot more clear than this one. This was in my garage. The other thing you're going to notice about epoxy, these are supposed to be using equal volumes, right? Guys, I've been using these the same amount of time. So this is actually my, probably my third order of epoxy. They're, these are a half gallon each. I always go through hardener quicker than I go through resin, hands down. Um, even with the pumps, and it's because it's thicker. Just it's more viscous than your hardener is. And I forget which one is part A and part B because I don't think they really label theirs like that. Like they literally just put on there, um, you know, Art and Glow and then hardener and then resin. 
All right. Now you can order your your pumps in different color. I saw one where you can get a white one and a black one. Some people just spray paint it so they know one from the other. But since I'm always mixing together, I didn't quite worry about it. I do let my epoxy sit for a little second just to let those bubbles kind of rise and do their thing. Then I'm going to go back in for a quick little swirl. And I must say, y'all, this is my first full marbling moment. I'm kind of nervous. So this is what we're going to try to do. We'll see what it, what it turns out to be. I'm excited. So these are the colors we're going to use tonight. I think it's, is it Tim Holtz or Jim Holtz, y'all? I want to say that's Jay. Holtz Alcohol Ink. So this is your citrus. I'm trying to use the colors that they often will put on clearance at the craft store that nobody really knows what to do with because they're not espresso, caramel, latte, like the Holy Trinity and Grail for um, wood grains. It's not a um, teak wood or the sunshine that people use for their honeycomb tumblers. And once you start getting the greens and the blues, people get really, really nervous about how to use them. This is Mermaid, and I've seen a couple of people use this online. I think it's gorgeous. We're going to add in a little watermelon, filling it, and then we have Sunset Orange. So these are going to be my primary four alcohol inks for tonight. And of course, we're going to mix a little bit of white with our epoxy, and I'm going to add in, this is the other thing that I learned, a little bit of mixative that's going to give it a shimmer. So let me grab that one too. And I want to show you guys the difference between the two. Let's go silver. All right, so we're going to do, should we do a pearl? Okay, let's try a pearl. Try pearl and see how it turns out. So here's another lesson that I learned. You see these? When you go on Amazon, be careful because these are also Holtz, same bottle as my alcohol ink, but this is a mixative. And mixatives are added. They can be added to your epoxy. They can, I've seen people add them to their paint color. Um, somebody else has another product it's almost like a quick set. It's not crystal lac, but they, they, mm. but this is going to mix in to another product. And when I did the first time I did a marble is I thought it was alcohol ink y'all didn't know until I watched a couple of videos and they're like, Oh, don't let it happen to you. Cause most people pick up the wrong thing. Now this epoxy has about 40 minutes of work time. The other thing with a mixative, shake it. I make sure just like my spray paints, um, most of my colors, I make sure I mix those up. And so we're gonna take a little bit of epoxy, just a little bit, probably about mm, two or three milliliters because this is, should be enough for maybe two cups, maybe one, probably two. I have mixed up my white. We're gonna take a little bit of white. And I'm also going to go ahead and I always drop the top and put in a couple of drops of the mixative. And this one has a really, oh, that thing is going to be everywhere. This one has a really cute pearl color to it. So if you can see, we're just going to mix that up. Make sure it's nice, all nicely mixed. And you need the white. When you add white to your marble you're going to notice that it really gives the colors something to go with um, we're going to add these in order from darkest to lightest so i'm probably going to start honestly with the red and the blue and kind of space them out and then i was tempted to put a yellow or something in there but i wasn't sure so this mixes pretty quickly and extremely well let's bring over our cute little specimen and Let's get to turning. Oh, it was ready. It's even turning. Notice, now we've got an angle here. We have got some stuff going on. Now this one will change direction when you tap it. And I just have to usually look 
and make sure that it is on there correctly, which currently it's not. So, I have to be careful with this one because sometimes it gives me like the weirdest little angles with stuff. If I have it too far on, too far off, it gives this really weird twist and it's not always centered on the cup. So I have to be pretty careful with this one. It does really well with my bigger cups, but with my smaller cups, it sometimes gives me the blues. Like that's a big change. And I just want you right there in the middle. All right, I think that looks, okay. We're gonna go with it. All right, we're going to do a flat coat. So I'm gonna add this good old finger, y'all. And I would love to be able to show you how much, but we're gonna do a lot thicker than most of us are accustomed to. And I even go under the bottom, to be honest. But I'm gonna lay that finger because I want enough epoxy on here that it's gonna allow those inks to move. So those inks should be able to fully move around on this tumbler without restriction is kind of the goal. We're gonna pick up some of that and we're going to smooth that out. So just smooth it out. You want a good base. Um, some people will heat up their part A and part B. And we've got a little crusty on there from our cup that we will get off as it comes back around. So it's just some dried epoxy there. And if you work it just a little bit, it's going to actually start moving around the cup on its own. If you have a dry spot and if you just hit it, the cup itself and the epoxy itself actually is going to do the majority of the work for you. And I mean, I really want this. I don't want the epoxy dripping off the cup, as you guys saw earlier. It's going to tell me I got a little bit too much. And the other thing is, don't forget the bottom of your cup. Um, if you didn't tape it off and you think you want to add something, or if you normally don't do bottoms, this may be a really good technique for you to try to do your bottoms. You don't have to have a large amount of epoxy on the bottom, but you do want to make sure that after you flood it, so we have used roughly about 20 milliliters so far on this cup. And that's just to get a nice, 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 nice flood coat. It is a 30 ounce cup. So I can definitely go a little bit heavier. And I'm not glittering, which is always helpful because if you um, flood too much, especially if you flood and you're not trying to, when I first started, trying to glitter a cup with just two milliliters of epoxy blew my mind. Like I just could not figure that out for the life of me. I do want enough epoxy on here that I can get movement. So I want to be able to have movement. I also recommend that once you feel like you've hit every spot on your tumbler, go back to your bottom because you're gonna have a little bit more epoxy than you normally would and make sure you hit your bottoms really well. And then just allow that to spin just a little bit. The longer it spins, the more even it's gonna become. So that's gonna be helpful for you as well. And what you're looking for is making sure that you don't have any left off spots, all right? So we're looking good on epoxy, feeling confident. Now we're gonna go in with our colors and I'm gonna actually change this epoxy glove because I don't wanna touch my inks randomly. And alcohol ink will stain your hand. So if you remember science class, iodine, any of those indicators from Echo Blue, anything like that, it's going to stain. So be very, very mindful and very, very careful of that. Um, well, let's start with Mermaid, why not? Why not? Maybe we'll get some springish colors. And if you notice guys, there's already glitter on here, even though we have not glittered. So when you have customers that say they won't, they, they would like to not have any glitter, I always warn them. I'm gonna just, boop, 
We're going to add and let it do what it does. I'm going to tell you now, this is going to look odd. And I'm going to have that one drip, or maybe two, that I put near the edge of the cup because I do want it to hit the bottom of the cup. And I'm going to make sure I've got a couple of drops. And I see some areas that I could probably add a drop. And at a certain point, I don't even squeeze the bottle anymore. I just kind of tip it over, All right? Let's add a little watermelon. When I first did marbling, I couldn't figure out how people got it to move. I'm like, all of my drips are just sitting in one spot. Like, what does that mean? And, you know, I kept really, really trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, and it just takes a second. Your epoxy is going to move. So it, I promise you, you're going to see more movement than you think. You just got to be kind of patient with it and just go with it. Have a good time with it. And we're going to do a couple of layers of these. If you look at my little parchment paper, you're going to have a little mess developing there. So that happens. I'm going to go in between it. Oh, got some splatter. To try not to do what is going to happen. And we're just going to go in between. And anywhere where you have not hit a color, just make sure you add a little bit of that color in. So you want to make sure every part of your cup kind of gets equal treatment because when it marbles, it's going to give you a much better finish that way. I don't want to get too close to the other colors. And then we're going to add in the orange. And I want my orange kind of in between. I want to make sure. Now this going to get some blue in here. Make sure you hit your bottoms. Pay attention to the bottom of your cup. And this is one of those. I'm gonna go back. The longer it spins, the more it spreads. And then I'm gonna show you the trick that I learned. And I was like, no. Is this what I've been missing all this time? And the answer was yes. This is what I've been missing, y'all. And I was just, uh, could not believe it. Could not believe it. So I'm gonna go around one more time. I'm just kind of filling a couple of my gaps because I don't want that much white. I really want this baby to be pretty marbly. Now, that's what we're gonna do. It's my friend, good old heat gun. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna hit because I want my ink to start moving. I want it to show me what it can do. This is exactly how we're going to get a little bit more motion. Just pay attention to how far you are and make sure you do not burn your epoxy. All right. So let's see. I haven't gotten to the stage of needing white just yet. Hmm. I need some yellow, y'all. What do you think about yellow? What else can we put into this little color? I feel like we're missing something. I don't know. I'm feeling it. But I want it to be springy. I started to use this as the base of a peekaboo and I couldn't decide. This is sunshine yellow. I feel like I need some yellow in some spots here. I had a chance to create the shipwreck cup, which I was really excited about. Caught a tutorial from Mr. Noah's Glitter. She is amazing. And she did the shipwreck cracking cup. And oh, I'm in love, y'all. It's like actually one of the easiest cups I think I have ever done. I've done so far. Um, it's like, like I've done that many. Oh, that made a difference. And this is the last. If you go in with too many colors, which I'm probably about to do, what happens is they muddle too much. And you kind of lose whatever it was you were probably going for. 
which is not the business. And this kind of reminds me of almost like an Easter egg. So right now I'm just going into all the areas that had a little white area. This color is pink sherbet is what we're looking at. And I'm gonna let it just spin. I'm gonna let that do its thing for a little while. I'm gonna see exactly what we end up getting. It comes out of trial and error. Some people can just eyeball it. Like they can tell you exactly what's needed. They know exactly where to go back in. And the amount that you're using is up to you. I recommend you kind of go slow with it. Um, remember, you can always add more, but you cannot take it away once it is done. So you have to be really, really mindful of how that's going to look. And uh, back to the heat's gone. We will go. And so that's what we're going to do. Now, there's another technique that I saw. If you tip just a little bit. In a couple of directions. See, and your bottoms will normally marble pretty well on their own. But this is what I've noticed as far as this goes. Now, these are going to keep moving and moving and moving. And remember that we had done this pearlescent white, right? So this is what I'm going to do. Because I'm still going to add this in. Even though I have white areas showing in between my cups. So, I'm wondering, should we cover all the white? What do you guys think? Should we just like go for it, go for it, or is that enough? Like, do you think it's gonna move enough? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe, maybe some areas in here that I wanna go for it. Oh, I thought I grabbed my other color, but I guess I didn't. I want to make sure it's all covered. That's just me. And I mean, I'm one of those. We're going to just go for the go until we cannot anymore. So let's just see what it does. I don't want any particular color to get lost. Because the sherbet is pretty faint, but it's kind of cool in what it does. When it's in between those little gaps there. Like I've got some white areas that I want to make sure they don't stay completely white. Because we're going to marble and swirl in. Oh, that made a difference when they got close to each other. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I feel like we're at a drizzle moment. You're going to actually drizzle. All right, so this is a nice drizzling consistency and we're going to drizzle don't forget your bottom you gotta love the bottom of your cup y'all and if you start at different areas and i just swirl kind of in the same direction i come toward myself because of how i like my tumblers to lay and then a couple of them, I will actually swirl in between. Because there are going to be some areas of your cup that are going to look a little bit more, like they weren't touched nearly as much as some spots. And it's true. You can add too much white. I have done that before. Even with the cracking cup, which I can show you guys, because it's one of my favorites at the moment. We're good on the white. I don't want to add too much white because what the white also does is it's going to start reminding you of that base coat. So I am going to, I want to go in along this lip though because I see a couple of areas in here that are not giving love and they look a little bare. Not on this cup, we are not. And there you go. I got it. This is it. And I'm going to be honest. If you put a good shimmer, translucent something on this, I think it would be pretty cute. 
Let me see if I can get my white to move just a little bit more. I don't want to get too heated or too runny because I don't want anyone to run in the wrong spot. Guys, that is cute. All right, so what do you think? I'm going to let that turn for a little while. And now we're going to go to some guy colors. So this is more of my girl setup. I'm going to let this continue to turn and move this little baby to the side as it does what it does. And we're going to come this way. And let's see if we have enough um, epoxy remaining, which, oh yeah, we're doing great. So... This is my cup turner. Um, comes with a kit from Amazon. Same as your other ones. This is going to be that 30 ounce from Rural, Rural King um, that they have on clearance based on just the color of it. These have been awesome, I will admit. I have enjoyed these cups um, actually quite a bit. I use them as practice cups because I didn't know if anyone would want that particular um, style cup, but it's been a really popular cup for me as well. All right, so let's switch out on some inks and see what other colors we can actually get into. And I want to make this next cup more on my guy-friendly side. So I'm going to go for so a couple of darker colors. So let's do some sailboat blue. Um, i got to stay away from that purple, y'all. That purple looks so addictive. So, so, so addictive. Um, Valencia, no idea what that is, but it's like an orange color. We have eggplant, which gives off this deep purple. We have some indigo, okay, making progress. I didn't want to just do black. What are the colors, guys? What are the colors? Um, we could do like a caramel, I guess. Maybe that one. Be careful with your blues and oranges because I don't know what this one look like. So, boom, boom. maybe a lemonade, and then yeah, we don't have anything too too dark. So I guess we'll go to cranberry. All right, let's go with some darker colors and just kind of see what we get. We'll play with these tonight. If all else fails and we don't like how these look, remember they could really, really turn into some excellent, beautiful peekaboo cups. And yeah, I think that marble is gonna be really cute. So I have picked cranberry, deep, rich color. We have limeade, which is a green. You have your Valencia, which Nice deep orange, and then indigo. And this one I can tell you guys from experience is gorgeous. <gasps> I just thought about it. What if we did this entire cup in different styles of blue? You want guys to just try all the blues? Let me put these back. So I thought about how the water turned out for my Kraken, and I really, really, really liked it. So why don't we just try a couple of blues? Okay, here we go. We're gonna do a blue cup. I'm gonna go for it. No, blue is my favorite color anyway. So we're gonna switch it up. We have indigo. We have cloudy blue, which I think is gonna be on our light, light side, which we know. Pool, a little aquamarine-ish. Turquoise, and this is really, really cute. And then sailboat blue. And sailboat blue actually became one of my favorites, y'all. It's not quite as dark and rich as indigo, but it is a nice color. So, I'm gonna take my little epoxy. Since my baby has been sitting for a little while, it's amazing, y'all, how clear epoxy gets with no bubbles the longer it sits. And then as soon as you touch it, it's bubble city. So here we go. What kind of coat are we doing? Is it thin with the finger or are we laying over? Flood coat is correct. So we're gonna flood coat this one as well. The more epoxy I can get to adhere to this cup, the more likely I will be able to get my marble to move. 
And that's what I'm going for. I want my marble to be able to move. So we're going to have a nice amount of epoxy on this cup. This baby's going to do fine. I'm going to go ahead and attend to the bottom of my little cup. Because sometimes when I'm working with whatever amount of epoxy is left, and y'all, we got some drips. Remember, we're not trying to drip. But this newbie here is working it. So you will figure out your load amounts. And I think this cup could probably do about 25 milliliters, um, maybe even 30. I've had a pretty big design on it before that was almost 3D-ish and had to really epoxy. So when you are, especially once you get comfortable enough to start taking orders, make sure you keep in mind what design your client is asking for. Because if it requires a lot of epoxy, charge more. Epoxy is not free, y'all. It's probably one of the most expensive um, items when you kind of start looking at it. Once you get through cups and types and, you know, the glitters and the pigments. And it, it, it starts to add up pretty quickly. So you want to make sure you're taking care of that. The other thing is I also have a lip on this cup. And it's going to be just enough epoxy to get this done. The way I really want it to. I normally don't scrape my sides, especially my original cup. So you have to be really careful. Um, oh, I usually get questions about drying time. For example, alcohol ink normally will dry to the touch. Um, if you're doing a wood grain, it, it dries, it seems instantly. Don't let that instant feeling fool you. Remember episode five. If you try to remove decals or move on to epoxy, what's going to happen is... Um, I've seen it where um, the alcohol ink will actually repel the epoxy and you can walk up to the cup, pick it up and literally peel that epoxy layer off. All right. So I will give these a full night um, for all of my working, hard working tumbler makers. For those of us who are not privileged enough to do this full time. Um, normally I teach. So like, for example, this morning I got up early. I would grain both of the cups that you guys saw earlier in the video. I allowed those to sit the entire day. I came back maybe 10 hours later, and then I'll remove the decals. So it's been plenty of dry time in between. So here's our flat coat. And you're going to get a couple little bubbles, which you should be able to pop. And I've even got some random glitter on here. But otherwise, this baby looks pretty good. So I'm gonna give that a second and let it do its thing. You're going to go through quite a few gloves, so just be prepared, y'all. It's, it's gonna happen. There's another way to say it. Um, I also keep a trash can pretty close to me because I know it's coming. So um, I use a pair of gloves for every cup. Sometimes I have to change gloves in between cups because if I'm going from a dark color cup and then think it out and go to a light color cup. I don't want to transfer anything directly into the epoxy, which normally happens either way. But so this baby is still going. Epoxy is self leveling. So you should be good. Darker to lighter. So if possible, start with your darker color. Kind of get a feel for it. I know that indigo is my darkest color. And then we have enough white to cover this one as well. So we should be good. And I'm going to be honest, y'all, this blue made me nervous at first, but this indigo gives life. It does. It, it, it gives some straight vibes. I'm going to be honest. It's like one of my favorites. So I'm going to go kind of heavy with this little blue. Warning. Heavy with the blue. So there we go. And it moves. I do like the darker blues because they really, really move, especially on this particular cup. And it may just be the curve of the cup as well. All right, so we're gonna move to sailboat blue. Sailboat blue gives a good, good tone. I'm gonna make sure I do that half drip at the bottom. I'm going in between where I just put my other indigo. Kind of get all areas with a little attention and love. Make sure you don't forget the lip of the cup. A lot of people are afraid to go toward the top of that cup. Girl, guys, go to the lip of that cup. You go. You want it to be smooth at the end of the day. Make it happen. Make it happen. And you will be fine. Once you've squeezed your ink, 
Don't forget, honestly, you don't have to squeeze it again. It's going to continue to come out. They kind of get a little messy. Um, especially my soap bowl. My soap looks like really, really messy, but I'm going to keep it rolling, you know. Um, next darkest is turquoise. And I still shaved right before. And drip. And drip. And this one could have went in a couple of directions, but just wanted to see what all these blues were going to give me at the end of the day for marble. And on a cup that is monochromatic, um, on a cup that you're keeping simple. Once you add that white, you're gonna get the you're gonna get that pop that you're looking for. So don't get nervous. Just kind of go with it, just like we did the smaller cups. Um, I kind of find the bigger cups are, are nice because they give me more play area. And that's just being honest. I have a lot more play area with them. So I am not sparing. When it comes to areas for alcohol ink, I kind of go for the goal in between because I want all my areas covered. And remember, we've got five inks. So we've got five different color blues we're working with anyway. So we have plenty of space and time. This is pool. I haven't used this one before. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a, oh, it's like a greenish color. Oh, it's like an aquamarine is kind of what it reminds you of. Um, hoping that's going to mix well. I don't want to forget the lip. I want to avoid that because that's going to be pretty important. If you have a cup with a ridge, make sure you get on both sides of the ridge that's in the cup. And that will also allow you to, full, to have full coverage. So that's the other thing. I'm going to go through, of course, the first time, filling in as many gaps. And then we're going to hit it with the heat gun. I like to do, this is another one. This is called Cloudy Blue. Um, I like to have a little movement in between before I do that second layer. Just to kind of figure out if I like what it's doing or if there's something I want to change. Um, this color is really, really faint. So this is going to be one of those good in between fillers because it's really faint. I'm just going to kind of see what that does. All right. Let that spin and do its thing. I'm going back in with all some more indigo. I promise you, I promise you. I am, I am. So, let's get some movement. Let's see what this looks like. Because once you start getting some swirls and dwirls, it kind of changes what you got going on. And as soon as that epoxy starts to heat up just a little bit, you notice how your alcohol ink is going to fray on those edges. Don't forget the top of that cup. Don't forget the bottom of the cup. So you've got to be really vigilant. And usually the bottom does a really good job of kind of swirling on its own anyway. You'll also notice that your bubbles are coming to the surface that are going to pop along the way. So that's something else that you can be excited about. We kind of heat it up and thin that epoxy. We're going to go back through again with another cup. So along my lip, I did not get as much indigo as I normally would have. So you're just going back to those areas that could stand a little bit of something. And you're going to make sure you add a little bit of something. And it's going to work with you. I promise. So we're done with indigo for the night. All of my areas of blue, we're going to hit those as well. And we're going to notice that they're going to fill in pretty nicely around here. And then this is when we kind of get that transition to your lighter colors. So I'm going to hit my top areas. I still have a couple of white areas that I want to go to. I don't want to forget the middle section of my cup or the bottom. There we go. Top. A little something. And the way these will mix, this is supposed to be a guy cup, but it's not dark enough, y'all. I think most of my guy cups end up being wood grains or just solid tumblers. 
unless they give me, a, I love guys when they give you a really specific design and low key, they're like, I'm so sorry for being picky. And on the inside, I'm like, thank you. Cause it makes it so much easier for me. Um, it's hard cause guys are like, Oh, just do what you want. And I'm like, no, you don't understand what I want to do is glitter and you're not a glitter kind of guy. So, you know, if you give me something to go on, I will probably do a whole lot better. And we're all going to be happy. All right, that looks great. I think we are ready for a little white. And remember, we had that pearl-esque pearl um, little mixture in this baby. Don't you try to set on me right now. We're going to... I'm gonna let you drizzle. I mean, drizzle. And remember, this is the same effect that they use for the cracking cup. It's the same thing you're gonna use for your sailboat cups. Um, anything that you're noticing, you can do lightning the same way. I've seen people use it. Um, I don't wanna to add too much white, but I definitely want to have a little play of white in every little area. And I think I got a little too much white in some areas, but we're gonna go for it. I'm still gonna hit this with the heat gun, lightly. I wanna make sure that that white is going to move. And by the looks of it, I'm pretty sure it is not gonna have a problem moving. And blue number reminds me, it's almost of an ocean feel, but And the bottom of the cups are always cute. So anywhere I have that white, especially. Ooh, and I'm going to lean you just a little bit. So we can get a little gravity action going on with this cup. And then we'll bring it back. All right. The gravity thing is just one of those things that I personally do. This is going to flatten out. I really like how that turned out. That looks really, really good. Um, these are going to continue to swirl and turn and mix with one another. Um, that epoxy, once again, has about a 40-minute working time. So between both cups, we roughly use about 25 to almost 30 milliliters of epoxy. Um, I poured, I actually mixed both of those at one time. Both of the cups were prepped. We used Rust-Oleum Matte White Paint. You can marble with any color of your choice. Remember the tint that's under it, just like it kind of changes how the light is going to hit glitter. It's going to do the same thing for your marble. I normally will marble with a white base, but if you guys would like to see a color base, um, let me know in the comments and I can definitely give that a try because this is going to be one of those for series. And I kind of debate once this is all cured on tomorrow, whether to decal it or not decal it. Um, before you go, and before I wrap this up, because I don't want to be immensely long, um, make sure you follow me, A Crafter's Journey. If you ask questions, you guys can go in and just click on the hashtag and it'll take you to other questions that people have asked as well. Um, oh, there we go. Um, the other thing also, when you're thinking about your cups, I want y'all to kind of see this in close. Notice how you still have those colors mixing in. So they're gonna mix for quite a while. If you add too much heat, you're gonna get a muddiness. So it's gonna run your colors together so much that you can't distinctly kind of figure out what was in there. And I'll be honest, I think between the pool and the turquoise, they made the biggest difference between the two. Because this really, really reminds me of kind of the effect that I got for um, the sailboat cup. I will let these turn overnight. I at least allow my cups to turn anywhere from four to eight hours. Honestly, it's really six to eight hours just depending on what's on the cup, just to make sure it has a good base. Sometimes I will put it on the drying rack and allow it to dry for four hours additional. So let me know what questions you have. I will list all the links, um, sorry, all the information for everything. I will get better about links. Um, based on what was used in this video, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.